After this one, I don't know where they plan on going. But I'm sure I'm curious. Beautiful geekies and welcome to my review of Ice Age Collision Course. It is directed by Michael Thurmeyer and Galanty Chu, and it is written by Michael J. Wilson, Michael Berg, and Yoni Brenner. And this movie stars Ray Romano, Dennis Leary, John Leguizamo, Queen Latifah, Jennifer Lopez, Jesse J, Jesse Tyler Ferguson, among a lot of other people. This is the fifth movie of a franchise that was born in 2002. So think about this. Teenage moms were kids when they saw the first movie. So in this movie we once again get Scrat, the best part of these movies, and he's still after his nut. Note that that is a singular. So no dirty jokes on here. And he happens to step upon this alien spaceship, or at least it's gotta be alien spaceship. He goes flying off into space and he happens to crash into some meteorites and some planets and creating the solar system. So Scrat is God now, I guess. And now he sends all these parts of broken up planets descending upon the Earth. The Earth receives a meteor shower that will destroy the world. As Diego, Sid and Manny are trying to escape the meteors along with their friends and find a safe place down under the Earth, Buck comes up to help them out because he has found a prophecy and so now they must find a way to stop it from crashing and destroying the world. This is one of those franchises that by now you should know that is not going to ask a lot of you. It's not going to be a family movie, maybe, and it will most be targeted towards kids. I gotta say, my favorite one of this franchise, and actually the only one I can remember, is the third one, where they first meet Buck and go under the ground to meet the world of dinosaurs. And in this movie we get Buck once again, and he is such a great, funny, character. If you remember a joke he made in the third movie about being married into a pineapple, hold on to your seats. The guy is just over the top and out there and that's what we like about Scrat and why he's the best part of these movies and now Buck in this movie once again the best and funniest part. Sid, Manny and Diego still got their charms, each one of them, and they still have their friendship. You feel the bond between these characters, but the movie just doesn't bring anything new to either of them. You got a secondary plot that involves a struggle that Manny is going through, another secondary plot that involves a struggle with Diego and his new girlfriend, played by Jennifer Lopez, and another struggle with Sid. This movie just seems to never make an extra effort. The movie just seems to go and pick up the easiest joke they can find so the kids will laugh in five minute intervals. And what I noticed in this movie and I never really noticed before was that Scrat comes in in like 15 minute intervals to give us a two minute short movie. And I think that Blue Sky Studios should just produce any other movie they want to and have Scrat always be the main focus in a short movie of his own because Scrat just makes you laugh. Scrat works. It doesn't need a story, it doesn't need a plot. Scrat needs to be slapstick, that's who he is, that's who he's always been, and they didn't try to fix that formula, and that's why it still works 14 years later. The animation in this movie is good, I gotta say. It's nothing that will leave you disgusted or how bad he is, but it's nothing that will impress you or stun you as you watch this movie. Nothing pops out. Nothing is, oh my god, that shot is gorgeous, those colors are amazing. The only really better sequence in this movie is when they are amongst the crystals in the Shangri Lama Palace, which is actually a sequence that holds up on its own, but really they spend a little too long on that, due to the fact that the freaking meteorite is about to crash on the earth and kill them all. The movie, it's not bad. It's definitely better than the last one, which was awful, because I I say that the movie doesn't try to be more mature or say something to audiences in general, but what I will say is that the movie doesn't try to have a deep message behind it about some sort of deeper meaning. The movie just is what it is, it does have its flaws, but it doesn't try to be more than it is. And I gotta give that valor to Ice Age Collision Course, and that is the only reason why it deserves a C+. What did you guys think of Ice Age Collision Course? Are you a fan of the franchise? Are you a fan of Buck? He's awesome, you gotta be. And what is your favorite film in this franchise in general? As I said, mine is the third one, Boundaries Above any of the other four. I have just received a very special message and I will bring a very special review on Sunday. I hope you guys like it and check that out because it's really important and it is something that really flatter me 
as I watched and read that message that I got. As you guys know, there are links to my Facebook, my Instagram, and my Pop Price Guide page in the description below. Go there and stop me on the internet. And also, I'll leave there the hashtag for my squad Q&A dedicated to the movie Suicide Squad. But you guys can ask me questions about anything you want and how many questions you want. If you are new to this channel and still haven't subscribed, please click on the button below the video box and join our beautiful geeky community and we can be geeky, united. And guys, I just uploaded two very special teaser trail reviews right out of Comic-Con. Those are the Luke Cage teaser trail review and the Iron Fist teaser trail review. I'll leave links for both those videos and of course, I will see you in all the special videos and reviews coming to the Geekness Overlord channel. Cheers!